Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. It's the Revelator once again, and hoping you are having a great Easter celebration. And hoping also that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, is with you. Now, before I get into the fifth segment in this Easter series presentation, let me just give you a brief reminder of what we covered earlier on. In the first segment, we shared about the Last Supper, in which Jesus presented his body and his blood in form of the bread and wine. We talked about the flesh and blood, and I took you to another level where Jesus is betrayed by not only Judas Iscariot, but denied also by Peter. And I took you to Jesus, where Jesus stood before Pilate, and Herod, and also stood before the high priest. And I took you further on to the next chapter where we talked about Jesus' death. Jesus is crucified on the cross. The hour of being condemned by his own people and the hour for Jesus to be recognized by God, to live for his cause. And today, in the fifth segment, I want to talk about Jesus' blood, which is the root and the cause of why Jesus came down here on earth in the very first place. Without Jesus' blood, without the necessity of Jesus dying on the cross, then everything is invalid. The price of salvation can never be calculated without calculating, without bringing into consideration any emphasis that concerns the blood of Jesus. Now, for us to explain more on the blood of Jesus, let us get into scriptures. But in the scriptures that I'm going to take you, I'm just going to take you a brief back so that you catch up with the today's presentation in consideration of where we are coming from and where we are going. Let's get into the book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. After Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up his ghost. We explained this in the Jesus' death, where I explained that Jesus, before he was considered to have given up his spirit. Jesus, according to narration, gave up the ghost. I explained that the reason why the scripture narrated saying Jesus gave up his ghost is because Jesus had been created by the Holy Spirit inside the womb of Mary. Therefore, Jesus gave up his ghost. And later on, the scripture says Jesus gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. All these signs happened on that very moment because it was a significance that proves that the one that had departed was not a regular or an ordinary being. It was one from God himself. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of saints which slept arose. This is the part that I need to explain. As I'm talking about Jesus' blood, and in the, inside Jesus' blood, we are talking about three days in hell. We are talking about three days in hell. I want you to understand what happened during the three days when Jesus was not on this realm. So many times people have explained about Jesus' life. They've explained about Jesus' ministry. They've explained about the cross, the events that transpired on the cross. They've explained also about the events that transpired before the cross, when Jesus was afflicted, when Jesus was beaten, when Jesus was caged. They've explained. It's written in the scripture. 
but a few have explained about what happened during the three days when Jesus was laying, was inside the tomb. And I mean his body, when his body was inside the tomb, where was Jesus? Because it is quite evident that Jesus only departed from this realm. He only gave up his ghost. It's quite evident that when the scripture says Jesus gave up his ghost, it simply means that Jesus decided to say now this is the moment for me to leave my body. He did not die because of the circumstances on the cross. He gave up his ghost, meaning that it was from within himself that he actually activated his own departure from his body. But if he activated his departure from his own body on the cross, where did his spirit go? Now, the scripture that I'm reading here signals that very actual moment when Jesus gave up his ghost. When Jesus gave up his ghost, there are certain events that were seen even by carnal men, physical men, that were seen practically with eyes, by witnesses practically. And part of those events that were seen is that the graves were opened and many bodies of saints which slept arose. Why? That needs to be explained in spirit. Why bodies of certain saints which slept arose? And why the scripture is saying bodies of saints which slept? I want you to understand that there were servants from the Old Testament that were remaining sleeping they remained sleeping and they were not considered to be dead the fact that they had done the works of god before jesus who would come and introduce salvation had not come they died as righteous men but they were not covered by the blood of jesus it's one thing to be righteous it's one thing to be holy but you don't have the blood of Jesus which covers you from any other fault from any other obstacle there was needed the blood of Jesus you will remember and acknowledge the fact that in the Old Testament they used the blood of animals and the blood of animals was imperfect it was temporary so what was needed was the blood of he that was perfect to come and cover even the saints to cover even the martyrs of Christ and to cover all those that were under the afflictions of Lucifer the devil what it means is that as soon as Jesus ghost which is the soul which is his spirit departed from his body it went down to hell and Hades. there is a place underneath the world which Lucifer captivates every soul that dies before repentance. And this is the realm underneath the world which Lucifer also kept the servants of God. I'm going to prove what I'm talking about with the scripture which is in Matthew chapter 12 verse 40. Jesus says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights, in the world's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Where is the heart of the earth? The heart of the earth is down there in Seoul, in Hades. This is a place where Jonah also went when he was swallowed by the, by, by the fish, by the shark. Jonah was not inside the belly of the shark. I once explained it in the underworld, demons of hell and Hades. I explained that Jonah fainted while he's inside the belly of the shark. And when his soul had fainted, we hear it even inside his prayer. That he fainted while he's in there. It means Jonah actually died while he's in the belly of that shark. And he went deep down. And if you read Jonah's prayer in the book of Jonah, I think it's chapter 2, he talks about going deep down underneath the mountains yet he was inside the belly of the shark which means that jonah was not only in the shark and this is the resemblance that jesus is using 
Jesus resembles the story of Jonah and says as Jonah was in the belly of hell, of hell for three days, so shall the, be the son of man as he was teaching before his death. Meaning that when Jesus died, Jesus went deep down to the belly of hell and he signifies his area as the heart of earth. Jesus talks about going down to the heart of earth. To the heart of earth, this is a platform where certain servants that had died as righteous were being imprisoned by Lucifer. They were being captivated by Lucifer deep down in the belly of hell, deep down in the heart of the earth. Jesus went there and challenged Lucifer the devil because Jesus had the capacity of him that had the the perfect blood. And Lucifer was keeping and imprisoning the souls of God deep down in the hell of hell, in the belly of hell, deep down in hell, in the seal of Hades. Jesus went there with his perfect blood, with his perfect capacity of being the perfect sacrifice. And he went and he captivated the souls because the graves that were opened, they opened at that very hour when Jesus gave up his ghost. I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying. In the three days in hell, three days deep down in hell and at death, three days in Seoul, three days in the underworld, Jesus gives up his soul on the cross. Jesus gives up the ghost on the cross. Jesus gives up the spirit on the cross and goes deep down in hell and at death to challenge Lucifer the devil who was holding the souls of God. Earlier on, Jesus says, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in 30 days. Jesus talks about rebuilding the temple of God within three days. But how do you destroy and rebuild in three days while you still within those three days will be dead? Meaning that there were activities that were happening. There was a construction that was happening within three days. This is why even earlier on, the likes of Pilate, the likes of Herod, could not find a fault in Jesus because they did not want Jesus to die on the cross. They did not want Jesus to give up his spirit on the cross because it was Lucifer who knew that Jesus would travel in spirit and visit another dimension in the spirit deep down in hell and hearts in the heart of the earth and challenge Lucifer and lead the captivity into captives and deliver the captivated out of captivity. I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying. Jesus' mission within the three days, within the three days, was to go down, deep down to hell and our death, and deliver the lost souls of God. And as Jesus gave up his ghost, as he went down, deep down to hell, the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared to many. Meaning that the likes of even the prophets of old, the likes of the martyrs that had been slain for the God, they were seen strolling in the city. Why is Jesus hung on the cross? Why is the body of Jesus hung on the cross? Meaning that what was seen hanging on the cross was no longer the body of Jesus. It was no longer Jesus. It was just the body. Jesus was no longer there on the cross. His spirit went deep down in hell and Hades and delivered the lost captives that had been captivated by Lucifer by virtue and the fact that they were not covered by the blood of Jesus. Jesus' death, meaning that Jesus' death covered not only those that were still breathing. Jesus' death covered also those that had operated in the Old Testament. I hope someone is understanding. I want you to t- I want to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 17 so that you, you, may, you may understand the significance of Jesus' blood not only to those that were in that dimension only. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 17. And Jesus says earlier on, before his crucifixion, before his death, he says, 
For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired, desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. What Jesus in simplicity is simply trying to say here is, the, is that even the prophets of old desired to enjoy this level of salvation not only the level of salvation through the blood the level of salvation through information the level of salvation through the word the level of salvation through the grace and the grace can only be explained through the blood of jesus i'm talking about the blood of jesus which covered even those that had de deceased even those that were no longer counted in this life. It went down, deep down in hell and our days to deliver the lost captives, to deliver the, the righteous men that was captivated by Lucifer, by virtue and the fact that they were not covered by the blood of Jesus. They could not be covered by the blood of the Lamb, which was sacrificed in the times of old. Child of God, I want to explain to you that the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, is worthy. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, is beyond the blood of any blood. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, covers even the angels in heaven. They rejoiced when Jesus was nailed on the cross. The angels in heaven rejoiced when Lucifer fell here in the book of Revelations. They rejoiced knowing that Christ would come down here on earth. Meaning that even the blood of Jesus, it covered even angels in heaven. Meaning that angels also rejoiced because Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, would cover not only this earth, but cover also heaven with the blood. The blood of Jesus. Child of God, I want to pray for you in this very moment because the flesh that you eat this Easter and the blood that you drink this Easter, this Easter is the blood of one that was made perfect by God. It is the blood that heals you from any disease. It is the body that gives you all good health it is the blood that gives you life it is the blood that cleanses you from all sins it is the blood that is perfect it is the blood that gives you life child of god i want to pray for you right now so that the worthiness of the blood of jesus can be made sound inside your life as jesus traveled in spirit and went deep down to hell and Hades and led out of captive the righteous men, the prophets of old. I want you to be removed from the captivity which Lucifer has given you during this Easter. In this fifth segment of the fifth presentation, in the Easter presentation, I want to pray for you right now. Rekapaso delebosita, shepra kosida. Rekapaso delebosita, makapra kasada, lakasa delebasata, jakose delebosita, moshi prakosida, moshi prakosida, rekopase demosida. Be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. As Jesus is in spirit right now, deep down in hell and Hades, the blood of Jesus is going to cover even some of the family members that died before they repented the blood of jesus is going to give a chance in spirit those that are being held captives by the blood of jesus not being held captives by the blood of jesus but being captivated by that which will be delivered by the blood of jesus the blood of jesus is going to cover even those that are martyrs the blood of jesus is going to cover even those that died on the deathbed before they could repent they did they wish to repent but they were not given the chance to repent by demons the blood of jesus is not going to hold captive anyone the blood of jesus is going to lead you out of captivity the blood of jesus is going to give you a new life in the spirit the blood of jesus is going to give you a new dimension in the spirit the blood of jesus is going to hold you not as a captive 
but give you a new life in the spirit child of god be delivered out of every affliction child of god if the blood of jesus could deliver captives deep down in hell and at death during the three days in hell jesus went there and defeated principalities defeated defeated hell and at death demons defeated lucifer in his own platform deep down in hell what more you that is still breathing what more you that still has a chance to confess his name what more you that is still praying what more you that is still living you still have a chance to repent child of god in the mighty name of jesus receive the blood of jesus this easter receive the blood of jesus this easter leka prokose demosita jacose prakosita reka paso delebosita mashi prakosita in the name of jesus child of god you are given a chance to repent this easter you are given a chance to be cleansed by his blood you are given a chance as in this present moment jesus is deep down in hell and death, delivering the captive the lost souls you are given a chance to repent in the name of jesus